I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my series on probability. Let me thank all the viewers and subscribers for watching my videos, posting excellent remarks and sharing the questions. Now this question comes from one of our students who is in grade 9. We had posted a solution using combination for the solution of this question. However, in grade 9, students have not done permutation and combination, but still they are attempting the same problems. So here is a solution for you. Let us see how to solve this question based on probability using normal methods, not permutation and combination. Perfect. So the question here is, there are seven black, five red and four green balls in a bag. Four balls are drawn without replacement. Find the probability that there will be exactly three red balls selected. At least three balls will be red and no red ball is selected. So these are three different cases and it is all for without replacement. So when it is without replacement, things are dependent on what has happened earlier and therefore the dynamics is very different. So let's try to understand the scenario. So we'll now first take the very first case that is four balls are drawn and we have seven black, five red and four green balls and we need to work out that there will be exactly three red balls selected. So think like this, we are talking about four balls to be drawn and what we want here is the probability for three red balls to be selected and that too without replacement. We have how many red balls? We have five red balls. Out of total of five plus seven plus four, which is 16, right? So what you notice here is that we have five red balls out of 16. So to begin with, probability of getting red is five out of 16, right? So attempting this question, which says there will be exactly three red balls selected, you should think like this. We have a scenario where we could get the red ball in the first selection. We may not get it. We may get it in the second one, right? So there are different ways in which we could get the three red balls. Let us see how. We could get first three as the red balls, right? Or that means the last one is not red. Or we could get first two red and then we do, may not get red, but then we get red. So we even then we get three red balls, right? How about this scenario? We get red ball and we miss it and then we get it once again. Similarly, we could have the fourth scenario where we may miss the first time, but then get red balls. So these could be different scenarios for getting exactly three red balls while selecting four. Do you agree with me? Perfect. So we'll now look into the probability of each. We have 16 balls in all. So the probability of getting the first red is 5 out of 16. Now we have selected one red ball, so we have only 4 left and total number is 15 since it is without replacement. Right? So if we have selected red ball, so it is one less, we have left with 4 red balls and out of total of 16, there are now only 15 total balls. So the probability of getting the second red is 4 out of 15. Now we have selected two red balls, first and second. So out of five, only three remains and total only 14 remains. So we get three out of 14 as the probability of getting the third red ball. Lastly, the fourth one, we do not want red to be selected. 
but it could be 7 or 4, black or green, 11, right? So out of these 11, which have not been selected so far, and total remaining are only 13. So the probability of getting others is 11 out of 13. So in the very first case, the product of these give us the probability of getting first three red and not the fourth one. In all, you have selected exactly three red balls. You get the idea, right? Second time, let us assume that this time we are having two red balls, then a blank, not a red ball. It could be black or green, and then a red ball. Here again, the probability of getting the first red will be 5 out of 16. The second will be 4 out of 15. The third one, here is some other, 7 plus 4, which is 11. So 11 out of 14. And now if we get red, the probability is 3 out of 13. Case number 3, where we get the first red ball, probability of that is 5 out of 16, not getting a red, is 11 out of 15. And then getting reds will be 4 out of 14 and 3 out of 13. Lastly, another way to get 3 reds is miss it the first time. So we get 11 out of 16, some other ball, and then 5 are remaining with 15 remaining balls, then 4 with 14, and 3 with 13. So for part A, there will be exactly 3 red balls selected, which will be some of these 4 cases, right? So for A, the answer will be probability of exactly 3 red will be some of these, right? So you can see clearly that the denominators are 15, 16, 15, 14, and 13 for all the cases. So I could take that as common, right? So we have 16 times 15 times 14 times 13. As far as the numerator is concerned, since we have three red balls, always we have 5, 4, 3, right? 5, 4, 3, 5, 4, 3, 5, 4, 3, and also 11. So these numbers are also constant. So that means four times we have it. So four times we have these numbers, five times, four times, three times, 11. So that is the total probability of getting exactly three red balls. Perfect. Now we could simplify this. If the calculator is allowed, it is much simpler. However, without calculator also, it is not bad. Four times four is 16, 16 goes away. 5 and 3 is 15, 15 goes away. So we are left with 11 on the top, right? We are left with 11 on the top, and the denominator here is 14 times 13. So let's do this. 14 times 13 is what? 3 times 4 is 12, 1, so that gives you 42, adding 14, will give us 182, right? So we get 182. So that becomes the deno uh, sorry. Uh, yeah, that becomes the denominator for us. So 4 times 3 is 12, 1, 3, 1, 4, and then 14, 182. So the probability of getting exactly 3 red balls is 11 over 182. Is that clear to you? Perfect. Now, part B. Let us look into part B now. So I hope this method is absolutely clear, right? Now, in part B, we are saying at least three red balls will be selected, right? So when we say at least, that means what? That means we get three red or we get four red. So the probability for three red or four red, we can say like this, probability of three red plus probability of four red, correct? So for 3 red we already have, which is 11 over 182, plus what is the probability of getting all reds? Well, for all reds, as you have seen here, it will be 5, 4, 3, 2, and the denominator will be 6, 15, 14, 13. Since we are taking the case when it is all red, right? So it is 5 times, 4 times, 3 times, 2 times over 16 times 15 times 14 times 13. So that becomes the probability for getting at least three balls with red. 
right so at least means three or more so we get in this case since we are only drawing four balls it could be maximum four perfect let's simplify this so five and three goes 15 and uh, four and two is eight which goes two times so in this case we get two times 14 times 13 in the denominator so we'll just multiply this by two so here we get this probability as equal to 11 over 182 plus so the numerator is uh, in this case all got cancelled right so it is uh, 1 over 2 times this so 1 over 2 times this so 4 8 times 2 is 16 6 1 so 364 right so when you add this up I have to multiply this by 2 so we get 22 plus 1 over 364 or we get 23 over 364 is that clear to you so that is how you can get the probability for at least three balls will be red is that clear to you so see without calculator you can actually do these calculations they may look huge but if you follow a method it is not that bad perfect the last one here is no red ball is selected right so that means all the time when you do the selection you get one of black or green which are 11 with us right so for part c probability that no red ball the answer should be what so that means we are not selecting red we are getting only 11 out of 16 so the numerator now will be 11 out of 16 times one less 10 out of 15 times 9 out of 14 times 8 out of 13 so here we get something which is black or green but not red and every time we have to reduce their number by one since one of them has been selected and the total also decreases by one since it is without replacement does it make sense to you right so so you could now calculate this value to get your answer right some calculations we have eight times two as 16 and then five goes three times right and this goes three times perfect so in the numerator what do we have in the numerator we have three times 11 which is 33 the denominator is 14 times 13 which we calculated as 182 so 33 over 182 is the probability of no red ball being selected does it make sense to you so I hope you understand and appreciate this method this time we did not use permutation or combination basic counting principles helped us to find the probability perfect so we get all our answers the answer for the very first one is 11 out of 182 which is the probability of getting exactly three red balls and 23 out of 364 is the probability of getting at least three balls with red color and no red balls is 33 over 182. I hope you understand and appreciate it. Feel free to write your comments, share your views and if you like and subscribe to my videos that'd be great. I will also attach to this the solution where we have used combination and we have also discussed how to calculate the combination part that should be the next step for you so it's good to learn at this stage i hope that makes sense here is a very interesting and important question which is seen in test papers many times there are seven black five red and four green balls in a bag four balls are drawn without replacement find the probability that so we have three questions there will be exactly three red balls selected b is at least three balls will be selected and c is no red ball is selected so in this case the order is not important at all so it's a case of combination right now as far as the total options are concerned so so the number of 
options available to us is selecting four balls right from seven five and four balls right which is total of uh, 7 plus 5 is 12, 12 plus 4 is 16. So we have total of 16 balls, right? So total number for us will be selecting out of 16, we are looking for a combination of four different balls. So that becomes total. Now in part A, we're looking for there will be exactly three red balls. So probability for exactly three red. So red is being selected out of the five available. So when we select three out of five, then it is a combination. We are selecting three out of five, which are red. The others could be either black or green, which is 11, right? 7 plus 4, 11. So out of 11, we need to select 1. Divided by total, which is 16 C4. So that gives you the answer for part A. Now as far as part B is concerned, we want at least 3 balls will be red. So probability where we say is at least three red. Now when you say at least three red, it basically means that there could be three red balls or four red balls. So that means three red or four. All are red. Or means addition, right? So three red balls is what we have already seen. 5c3, 11c1. All four means out of five, we are selecting all four red and remaining 11, we select nothing. Zero. Okay. Divided by total numbers, which is 16c4, right? Part C is no red ball is selected. That means all the balls are selected are either black or green, right? So probability, no red. So no red means all are selected from 7 or 4, right? So that means we have 11 as the combination. 4, correct? All red. All not red. Okay. So we could divide this by 16C4, the total number of combinations. So that becomes the answer. Now many of you will be allowed the use of calculator. So if you are allowed the use of calculator, it's a very simple calculation. Or we can use calculator, get the answer. Some of you may not be allowed calculator. So we will also see how to calculate these values without calculator in this video later. So let's uh, first figure out the answers with the calculator, right? So we have 5 combination 3 times 11 combination 1. So that's the numerator. And we are going to divide this by 16 combination 4. So we get the first answer as 11 over. So we get this answer as equal to 11 over 182 okay so the next one here is now let's do this next one 5 c3 so first part is same let's do it so we have 5 combination 3 times 11 combination 1 plus we have 5 c4 11 c0 right all four red so 5 C4 times 11 C0. So that is the numerator. And we are going to divide this by 16 C4. 16 C4, right? So that's the answer, which is equal to, in this case, 23 over 
The last one here, 11C4, 11, C4, 11 C4 divided by 16C4. No red balls is 33 over 182, correct? So these are the answers for the three cases, correct? Now we will see how to calculate these values without calculator, right? Now let's move on to a fresh page to see how to calculate without calculator. Right? So basically we worked out combinations. In general, if I have NCR, that means there are N objects and we have to select R out of those objects. In that case, the number of combination is N factorial divided by R factorial times N minus R factorial. So in our example, we had, uh, let's calculate for one value, let's calculate for B, which was probability for at least three red balls, right? So, so we had actually, to begin with, we had seven black, five red and four green. So if you have to select at least three red balls, then you could from here out of these five, you could select three. If you do that, one has to be out of four and seven, which is 11 C one. Plus, you could select all from the red, so that means 5C4. Total number of combinations is, when you add them up, which is 7 plus 5 plus 4, 12 and 4, 16. So out of 16, we are selecting four different balls. So that is what the probability is. Now the question is, how to calculate, correct? So let's calculate these values, one by one, right? And then we'll substitute them there. So when I say 5C3, we'll use this particular formula. 5 factorial means 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. That is the meaning of 5 factorial, okay? In the denominator, we have R, which is 3 factorial. Let me write 3 factorial. And then we have N minus R, which is 5 minus 3, which is 2 factorial, correct? Now, 3 factorial basically means 3 times 2 times 1. So, 3 factorial you could cancel with 3 times 2 times 1. 2 factorial is 2 times 1. So, 2 goes 2 times and we get this value as equal to 10, right? So, 5C3 is 10. Is that clear to you? Now, if I say 11C1, so that means 11 factorial, right? And then we have 1 factorial, 1 factorial is 1, and then we have 11 minus 1, which is 10 factorial. So 11 factorial is 11 times 10 factorial, you're left with 11 only, right? So whenever it is 11C1, it will be NC1 will be N, okay? Now the other term is 5C4. Now 5C4 is similar to 11C1, and you expect this answer to be 5. Is it clear to you? You can calculate and then figure this out. Well, the biggest number here to calculate is 16C4. So let's see how to calculate 16C4. So, so let me just make some room for this. So it's not very difficult to calculate, correct? So let's do 16C4 on this side. 16 C4 means 16 factorial over 4 factorial times 16 minus 4, which is 12 factorial. So 12 factorial means we get in the numerator 16 times 15 times 14 times 13 times 12 factorial, right? So this 12 factorial cancels with 12 factorial. Do you see that? Now we are left with 4 factorial. 4 is 4 times, 3 times, 2 times, 1. Okay. So 4 times, so 3 goes, 
3 goes 5 times, 4 times 2, 8 goes 2 times. So we get 14 times 13 times 2 times 5. Now see 14 times 13 you could do manually. So this is a slightly more critical calculation. 3 times 4 is 12, 1. So we get 42 plus 14, we get 182 times 10 will give you 1820, correct? Times 10, which is 5 times 2. So we have all the numbers here. Let's substitute these numbers and calculate. So 5C3 is 10, 11C1 is 11, plus 5C4 is 5, and 16C4 is 1820. 1820 could also be written as, as it is written. We don't really have to multiply them, right? Uh, you will realize why I'm saying so. Now I'm multiplying, of course. Okay, so this is 110 plus 5 is 115 divided by 1820. Now 5 is common, so let's simplify this, dividing by 5. 5 times 2 is 10 and 5 times 3 is 15. Here we get 5 times 3 as 15, 32, 6 and 24. Right? So we get our answer which is equal to 23 over 364. So I hope that steps for calculation is, is uh, clear to you. Now it looks a big amount of calculation when I'm showing it here, but once you practice a bit, you could directly do it. 5C3, you could have written very easily 10 times 11, okay? Uh, I mean, 11C1 is 11, I mean. So it's not a very difficult calculation. Yes, 16C4 requires a lot of multiplication, which you could do on the side and then get your answer, right? So some practice may be required. If the calculator is not allowed, it is worthwhile to practice some questions and then understand how to calculate combinations, right? But I hope you understand and appreciate that all these questions could easily be done using combinations. Perfect. So that is a neat way of doing it. Feel free to write your comment, share your views, and if you like and subscribe to my videos, that'd be great. Thanks for your time and all the best.